So today is the Solemnity of the Annunciation. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity to talk about our patroness here at the, the parish of St. Mary, so our Blessed Mother. You know, I think oftentimes with Mary, we think of the kind of motherly, nurturing side, you know, Hail Mary, gentle woman. But really there's a powerful aspect. There's a, a title. When she goes and visits her kinswoman, Elizabeth, Elizabeth says a title, Blessed are you among women. Two women, really in the Old Testament, that were known by this. One was Judith, the other was Jael. And Judith, if you look at her, so um, the Persians were coming in and they were trying to uh, overrun Israel. And the town that she was in was up on a hill. And anyway, the the leaders are ready to capit capitulate to them. They say, we'll give five, God five days really to do something. And then, so she basically says, no, um, God's going to take care of this. And she dresses up. She was a beautiful woman, goes in the general, is really enamored with her. Anyway, that evening he has a dinner for her. He drinks too much. And what she does, she lops off his head. <laughs> and with her handmaid, she goes back up into the city. They put the head on the outside of the walls. And really the Persians are so distraught by this, Israel ends up being victorious. She is called blessed among women. The other one, Jael, it was at the time of Deborah. So Deborah tells Barak that to go and to conquer the Canaanites. And he says, I'll only do it if you come. And she says, well, if, if I go, then a woman's gonna get the credit for it. So he says, okay. Anyway, they're, they're routing um, the Canaanites and Sisera, who's the general, he flees on foot. And then he goes to the tent uh, of this woman and she gives him milk to drink, uh, Jael, and, and covers him up. He, in his exhaustion, he falls to sleep and she takes a, a tent peg and a pallet and through his head. So you look at these two women, Jael and Judith, blessed among women, that's what they're called. And, uh, and what do they do? They vanquish the enemies of Israel. The prophecy that's given to Eve is what? The serpent will strike at your heel and you will crush his head. Mary's the one who will fulfill this prophecy. You know, blessed is she among women. You know, so this warrior kind of, there's this, there's this power that, that's, that's there that we see. And so really, I think kind of appealing to her is our intercessor during these times, you know. And so the Annunciation, so how was it that she was able to do this, to be so strong? Um, let it be done to me according to your word. You know, God's word, so Jesus Christ made flesh, and she says yes completely to that. 100%. You know, I think oftentimes, you know, I remember as a kid, sometimes if someone would say, uh, do you swear, do you promise? And I'd kind of like, I'd do my like fingers behind the back. Uh, yeah, like I promise. And I think sometimes we can do that with God's word. You know, we kind of, kind of little fingers crossed behind the back. Like, well, mostly <laughs> I, I say yes to this. But really the, the power in submitting to God's word. So whether it be in, in our workplace, whether it be in our current situation, we're stuck at home or, or kind of difficult circumstances, are we willing 100% to submit to God's word? Mary did that, it was, it was the power. Blessed is she among women. Um, why? Because that's how she lived her life, moment by moment, really just continually submitting to God's word. Um, when we look at the saints, that's what they do, 100%. They submit to God's word. So maybe the challenge for us on this feast, the solemnity of the Annunciation, would be to imitate Mary um, in submitting ourselves to the word of God, whatever that might look like for us in our situation right now, but also to ask for her powerful intercession um, during this time. So take care, God bless, keep one another in prayer.